You're at Comics Online. We're here at DC Entertainment's headquarters in Burbank, California. I'm here with Burt Ward from the old 1960s Adam West Batman series. Classic. And, and classic, no. sorry, <laughs> classic, definitive Adam West Burt Ward Batman series. I'm also here with Tom Root and Tom Shepard, uh, the team behind Robot Chicken. Guys, thank you very much for, for speaking with us today. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're, uh, we're, we're really excited about the DC Comics special number three, Magical Friendship. I'm getting the, the complete title down. Right. Uh, quite a mouthful. <laughs> um, so let's, let's first talk about uh, Bert being involved. Uh, we've got you and Adam uh, joining the, the crew for this. Uh, how was it for you uh, jumping into the, the Robot Chicken universe? Uh, it was a, quite an experience. I'll tell you, I was very impressed, a little shocked at first because a little different from the kind of dialogue that we had on Batman on our show, but very creative. The, the guys are geniuses, and they've pushed the envelope, and they've... It's just, I've enjoyed it very much. Anything uh, as far as your characterization, you get to actually play yourself. Uh, was that a little bit different than playing a, well, it is a caricature of yourself, I guess. But was that a little bit different for you? Well, you have to understand, when I was hired to play Robin, uh, there was 1,100 young guys that tried out for the role. And the executive producer said to me when he hired me, would you like to know why we hired you? And I said, yes. And he said, the reason we hired you, Bert, out of 1,100 other young actors is because, in our mind, if there really was a Robin, I mean, really, you personally would be it. So we don't want you to, quote, act. We want you to be yourself, Bert Ward, and be enthusiastic. And that's what I did for 120 episodes. That's a great story. So, guys, having you... Uh Working on this new special, let's talk about the, the creative process. Um, the multiverse plays a very large element, including throwbacks to, to different incarnations of the characters. Uh, can you talk about just the creative process of, of bringing these new versions of the characters to life? Um, well, we know we wanted to go big because this was the third in a trilogy. And there was nothing bigger in DC Comics than Crisis on Infinite Earths. And so uh, once we figured out that we were going to do our own Crisis... Uh, it opened up the floodgates of uh, ideas, different gags, different characters from 70 years of DC history. Um, and so as writers who don't really want to work that hard, uh, it was a lot of fun to have uh, almost no limits on what we could include in the special. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we did, we, uh, I think there were, there were a few uh, things we had to scale back on, but we used, I think, almost 400 puppets in in the special so we we actually managed to pull off a lot of the dc characters and what's an average for an average robot an chicken average robot chicken episode is around 90 or something like that yeah now you guys have really moved away from existing toys and you've created your own puppets for all 400 is that correct not for everything. We did use some some toys. Yeah, okay. yeah. You'll you'll see them in the special. It's but but they're you know toys are so amazing looking now. It's hard to pick them out. Sometimes the scale is a little a little bit off, um, and you can tell. But for the most part, I mean, some some of those toys are are just toys in there. How is it uh, as a fan playing in the DC comic sandbox, so to speak? Uh, well, I've been. I mean, DC characters have been part of my life really since I was born. I can't remember not knowing who Batman and Robin and Superman were. So it felt really natural. It's like, the, I know these characters so well. There was never any, uh, you know, I didn't have to do too much research to figure out how to tell a joke about Batman and Robin. Yeah. And I'm just happy to prove my seventh grade math teacher who took all my action figures away wrong, who said I would never amount to anything if I played with action figures because <laughs> I don't know if he's alive or dead, but uh, that's what I do now. There you go. Hopefully dead. Ah, someone got told. <laughs> I, I think he is dead, actually. Oh, that's uh, actually really sad. Kind of, kind of tragic. <laughs> I'm sorry. He never but, gave me back the action figures, so. And I don't take it back. There you go. What did you lose? Do you remember? I, I don't remember now. I just remember <laughs> I cried. There's this magical thing called eBay, and you might be able to get them back. And, it may have been on there. Yeah. Now, Bert, there have been so many different incarnations of Robin since your original Robin. Uh, have you enjoyed any specific uh, takes on the character past your time? Have you really spent any time with Batman in that universe, just watching and enjoying those characters? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, the way I look at it is this, you know, there are a lot of wonderful actors that have portrayed Batman, and Chris O'Donnell did a nice job with Robin, but in my mind, there's only one real Batman. 
and that's Adam West. So uh, the others are great actors, but in my mind, Adam really was and is Batman. Now, are you okay with the fact that they didn't include any death trap scenes for you to film for this? I know you love those death traps. Uh, well, you know, um, I, I think what they did was great, and I, and I love it, and I think that they did what was right for this audience, and, and I think it was very smart and very quick and very sharp, and I don't think they needed to go there. I think what they did was the right choices, and, and I applaud them for it. Would you want to return uh, to your Robin character in a voice capacity again in the future? Yeah, of course. I, I think uh, I think they should do a Batman movie with Adam and I. I mean, if you can only imagine what it would be like an older Batman and an older Robin with all the foibles of being older. You know, I mean, can you imagine Batman going to the closet to get his cape and the dust billows out and Robin can't pull his tights up and fight scenes where they get tired real easy. <laughs> I mean, you know, this, and especially with writers like these guys and the minds they have, they could take us in today's world and, and take it one step further than what they've done here with Robot Chicken, and I think it would be spectacular. And DC seems to be so creatively open to properly merchandising their characters to the entire spectrum of audience. Well, specifically the fact that we've seen Batman 66 comics recently, and your show finally got released uh, on Blu-ray and DVD. Congratulations on that, by oh, the way. We're thrilled. Uh, I, I personally powered years, through. Almost 50 years of trying to answer why it wasn't out. <laughs> well, as soon as I got my set, I actually marathoned through uh, for the next couple of weeks. So it was really fun for me, reliving you know, a piece of my childhood. Well, uh, I, sure. I want to say one thing to Warner Brothers. They did an absolutely spectacular job. They restored the quality better than the original quality of both the picture and the sound. It, it was just an amazing job they did. Everywhere when I go out on appearances all the time, last weekend, I, all the time I'm in appearances, and people say to me, oh, this, this was so spectacular. It was worth waiting for. The job that Warner Brothers did, you know, the production quality is superb. Now, uh, in terms of set pieces, you guys have some really uh, distinct DC Universe pieces. Um, the, the Hall of uh, Doom, or uh, the Legion of Doom's headquarters, the Hall of Justice. Uh, was there anything specific that you guys really liked playing with in terms of the, the setting? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I really like getting inside the, uh, the uh, Hall of Justice uh, locker room. That was pretty fun, <laughs> <laughs> seeing what goes on there. Uh, for me, it's uh, every time we write one of these specials, I try to write a Teen Titans sketch because that was my favorite when I was growing up. And every time uh, I write one, it gets approved and then it gets cut for time. <laughs> so as of yet, we still have not done Titans Tower, uh, maybe one of these days. <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's, the one, that's the set that I'm really looking forward to. Someday we'll get Titans Tower. But you got Simon in at least, and he's a <laughs> Titans-related yeah. villain. He, re he comes off great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs>